Welcome to Urban Growth, Protest, and Exclusion. This is Melinda Klein. In response to political uncertainty, American reformers founded settlement houses, reform associations, and political parties to change things. Some evangelical leaders use religious morality and duty as a platform of political support. Others condemn the growth of industry and big business as having negative effects on American society. At the same time, some reformers agitated for the full exclusion of blacks from society as citizens and consumers. Thus, the 1880s laid the foundations not only for a transatlantic republic of cultural change, but also for an empire of missionary work that stretched the globe, driven home with trade and commerce. After the 1880s, American cities like New York, Boston, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and San Francisco grew in population. By the 1890s, New York and Chicago had over 1.5 million people while Boston, Baltimore, and Philadelphia had close to a million inhabitants. Railroads, cable cars, and urban transit in general allowed the daily movement of people in the city. The city was distinguished by race, poverty, and housing construction. For Native and African Americans, new immigrants from Europe and China, their rights and access to public services, protection, and public housing was on the decline. One of the greatest urban problems by city planners was housing this population. Lacking building codes, even the newest buildings were substandard. Many contractors looked for cutting costs. This meant limiting windows, plumbing, lack of heating or ventilation, wall thickness, and safeguards to reduce the incidence of fire and spread of disease. By the late 19th century, middle and upper class people practiced Victorian social customs. This in general mirrored social practices in England where Queen Victoria ruled from 1837 until her death in 1901. This code of personal conduct and behavior demanded restraint, meaning delaying personal gratification and exhibiting self-control. Number two, sexual modesty. Number three, temperate habits, meaning light or no drinking of alcohol or spirits. Number four, hard work, dedication to full-time employment, preferably a professional degree from education. Literate citizens found an abundance of reading for every taste. There were over 3,000 American magazines by 1890. Journalism by then was transformed with stories dedicated to the plight of the poor and underprivileged. Also a product was the telegraph which helped pass along the news to other press headquarters. This process became known as the National Wire Service, providing short stories to multiple newspapers. Dime novels were cheap reprints of first editions for the mass public that made their appearance in the United States at this time. They were shorter and abridged. Some of the most popular rags to riches novels of the day were by Horatio Alger, who spread ideas of becoming the fittest individual supporting aspects of social Darwinism. He wrote 106 books and sold millions of copies. Alger argued that men of energy and determination, the fittest, could triumph in the competitive system against great odds. By the 19th century, reformers advocated if immigrants and poor people did not choose better, healthier lifestyles, poverty was the result. 
reform groups in the later 19th century in the U.S. and Britain in attempting to uplift the masses with changes in cultural practices such as limiting drinking and sex and finding the majority of the poor wanted to retain these simple pleasures above all things, reformers turned their attentions and energies to environment, improve the lives of the poor through education and better housing. 19th century reformists argued that ignorance, poverty, and even becoming a criminal was not a result of some inherent moral or genetic failing or even God's divine providence, the person's destiny. Reformers argued that it was an unhealthy environment that was the cause. So to change society, this had to be better not only for everyone, but the people that needed it most. The reformer Jacob Rees is best remembered for using his photographic and journalistic talents to help poor immigrants and street children in New York City, the subject of most of his writings and photographic essays. Few Southerners had ever accepted the idea of racial equality. Eventually, the Supreme Court validated state legislation that instituted the separation of the races. In Plessy v. Ferguson, a case involving a Louisiana law that required separate seating arrangements for the races on railroads, the court upheld that separate accommodations did not deprive blacks of equal rights if the accommodations were equal. Jim Crow laws were state and local laws enacted in southern states in efforts to enforce this separation. This took place between 1876 and 1964, requiring racial segregation, especially of African Americans, in all public facilities. Immigrants of Chinese descent experienced opposition not only to their culture but also their practices in the United States by the 1880s. However, unlike African Americans, Chinese immigrants and citizens used our law courts in efforts to fight discrimination and civil rights being denied them. Before the 20th century, there were no standards in how businesses were required to treat their workers. In early U.S. history, the economy, not the worker, was protected under the law. Interest in the outside world was growing. By the 1870s, the United States sought a larger role in world affairs. The campaign for an expansionist imperialism foreign policy gained momentum slowly in the face of ingrained isolationism. But between 1887 and 1893, the U.S. took the first steps towards becoming a world power. Applying the doctrines of social Darwinism to foreign relations, advocates of empire building said that a nation did not need to expand beyond its own natural boundaries would find itself unfit to survive. In time, this would lead the United States to acquire islands in the Pacific, such as Hawaii, Guam, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, either through political coup or by process of war.